Hello guys, welcome to my vlog. In this video, I will share my reflection on the Rintira and Philippine source book. So, let's start. Act of Declaration of Philippine Independence and the mode of reflection I use is mirroring the passage that, that I have read talk about the independence that the Filipino of the Republic of the Philippines has been longing for Colonel L. M. Johnson, the artillery officer witness and signed the agreement of free the nation after being conquered by different colonizers under the regime of the Dr. Don Emilio Aguinaldo. It is mentioned that the flag should not be altered in any way or many ways as it signifies signifies as a great history and greatest re representation of the country. After reading that document, I do, I do re relate of how good it feels to be free. Freedom is based in the essence that I have the right to think. I have the right to think that others do not like and to do whatever I want. But there are still certain limitations on what I can do as a person who have a uh, strict parents. The freedom, the freedom I have now can't be, can't be put in into words. I feel like I'm more mean. I haven't feel independent when I was in my parents' house, so they know everything about me. Even when I'm snort my decision, kind of will be according to their decision. Where I can see and it's defined by the books or depicted in movies. So. I cannot blame them about because I have an Asian household. When I was when I was in college, I have to leave home and go to my aunt's place to study. Here I was able to do things that I have not done before. So even if there are still mine or restriction, I know that I know that it is only is only because they are care for me. Nevertheless, I felt more independent than I was before. I feel happy about it because I was able to know more about myself discover new things like, like I grew as a person. This act of declaration of the Philippine independence by Ambrosio Lizares Bautismo became a basis, basis of, for the present generation to discover when, when and how the Philippines was liberated. It, it provided information leading us to deeper understanding as to how the Philippines was freed from the horror brought by the Spanish colonization. It only contain the declaration of our independence alone alone but also provide background information how things came up upon and also the suffering of the Filipinos of our recognized heroes and most specifically the illustrators on the, on the hands of the Spaniard reading this account made me even more grateful that we have our heroes who are willing to sacrifice their lives just to free their people from suffering it, allow, it also allowed me to know the root of our liberty that we are enjoying today. After knowing our story, gradually I'm starting to feel like a real Filipino who appreciates her all heroes and history. Next is 1899 Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines Malosos Convention. And the mode of reflection I use is mirroring, mirroring again. It's all about the political constitution of 1899, informally known as the Malusulos Constitution was the constitution of the first Philippine Republic. It was written by Felipe Calderon Y. Roca and Filipino Buin Camino as an alt alternative to a pair of proposals to the Malusulos Congress by Apelario Mabini and Pedro Paterno in Article 6. I see myself because I was born in the territory of the Philippines and I'm... And I'm happy because I'm pure Filipino. It is present because until now the political constitution that will want to title 14 are still in the Philippines. The political constitution of 1899, informally known as the Morales Constitution, was the constitution of the first Philippine Republic. It was written by Felipe Calderon, Y. Kuruka, and Felipe Bunz Canimino as an alternative to a pair of proposal to the Molusos Congress by Apelinario Mabini and Pedro Paterno. After a link lengthy debate in the la latter part of 1898 was promulgated on, on 21 January 1899, it was composed of 101 articles divided into 14 titles with 
transitory provision in eight further articles and one and number additional article the constitution was convened convened to create Filipino state with a government which has three distinct branches the executive, the legislative, and the judici judicial. It also to establish justice, provide common common defense, the benefits of liberty, imploring the aid of the sovereign legislator of the universe. It is monument to the capacity of the Filipino to chart their own course along democratic lines. This symbolizes the ideals of, of the people who had emerged to, to the light of reason from the dark age. This shows that constitution isn't biased towards Filipino only and also says aliens as those also deserving of human rights. The constitution overall protected the Filipinos from abuse of power by the government and also abuse of freedom by the people who have ill tent. The constitution showed the abilities of the Filipinos to be independent by letting them to create a state that consists of three branches. These are the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. The constitution also provides the right of Filipino. Next is Treaty of Peace between the United States of America and the Kingdom of Spain. And the mode of reflection I use is mirroring the Treaty of Peace between the United States and Spain was signed at Paris but is by the respective commissioner on the 10th day of December 1898 ratified by the government a few months later. Spain agreed to city to the United States, the Philippine archipelago and as of now considered as thousands of islands here in the Philippines as one of the treasures of our country. Moreover, in this lesson, I see myself as young of one who witnessed the beauty of our archipelago and was inspired to make a thing in order to promote our own treasure. Because of it, I am much grateful because it is my pleasure to be one of the instrument in promoting our own country. It's absent because the U.S. and Spain didn't repeat what did to the Philippines. I feel pity for the people who joined the war between the United States versus Spain because they have families and children waiting for them. And I also feel pity for the people who did not fight and, innocent, and the innocent people. The 1998 war between the United States and Spain came after three years of fighting the Cuban rebels to win independence from Spain, happening so close to the coast of Florida. The conflict in Cuba transfixed Americans concern for our U.S. economic interest in the region along with the American public outrage over the brutal tactics of the Spanish military spurred public sympathy for the Cuban revolutionaries. The tension between the U.S. and Spain growing the explosion of the U.S. battleship Maine and Havana Harbor on February 15, 1898 brought the two nations at the brink of war. On April 20, 1898, the United States Congress passed a Joint resolution acknowledging Cuban independence, demanding that Spain abandon its control of the island, and authorizing President William McKinley to use military force. When Spain ignored the U.S. ultimatum, McKinley implemented a naval blockade of Cuba and called for 100, 125,000 U.S. military volunteers. Spain declared war on the United States on April 24, and the U.S. Congress voted to declare war against. Spain the next day. The first battle of the Spanish-American War was fought on May 1 in 1898 in Manila Bay, where U.S. naval forces defeated the Spanish Armada defending the Philippines. Between June, June 10 and June 24, U.S. troops invaded Cuba and Guantanamo Bay and Santiago de Cuba, with Spanish army in Cuba defeated. The U.S. Navy destroyed the Spanish-Caribbean Armada on July 3. On July 26, the Spanish government asked the McKinley administration to discuss terms of peace. On August 12, a cease of fire was declared with the understanding that a peace treaty must be negotiated in Paris by October. The island of Puerto Rico and Guam were also placed under American control and Spain relinquished its claim to Cuba under the treaty. Cuba gained independence from Spain and the United States gained possession of the Philippines. Puerto Rico and Guam, marking the end of Spanish imperialism, the treaty established the United States position as world power. Next is convention between the United States of America and the Great Britain delimiting the boundary between the Philippine archipelago and the state of North Borneo, 1930. The mode of reflection I use is telescoping.
in the life in our society sometimes have boundaries to not broken. This is the norm of society to be followed and be accepted. And sometimes this see us different when we are out of the box. The convention between the United States of America and Great Britain is still meeting the boundary between the Philippine archipelago and the state of North Borneo. All I know is to have an access of its boundaries. According to the Article 1, it's here ugly and declared that the line separating the islands belonging to the Philippine archipelago on the one hand and the islands belonging to the state of North Borneo, which is under British protection on the other hand, shall be necessarily by established follows. Hence, to not along the meridian longitude 119 degrees east of Greenwich to its with a parallel of degrees 42 minutes and north, that is the dense in a straight line, approximately through passing between Little Bakugan and Angit Bakugan Island to the straight section of the parallel of 6 degrees 17 minutes north, that is the and the meridian of longitude 117 degrees 58 minutes east of Greenwich, the latter point being in a boundary, defined the treaty between the United States of America and Spain signed at Paris December 20, 1898. This is just one of the articles in the emulating boundaries of the seeds territories. Boundaries limit us what we expect in order to break the walls we must decide for the betterment and celebrity of love and prosperity. XS President Emilio Aguinaldo Declaration of War on the United States Marulus Bulacan of February 4 8. In the mode of reflection, I use is mirroring the article that have read talk about the Aguinaldo declaration of war on February 4, 1899. He declared war on U.S. forces in the island. I see myself Emilio Aguinaldo for what America did to him, that America pretended to be ally of Aguinaldo, but that was a lie because America did to war on Philippines and Emilio Aguinaldo was full bill president of America. It's like the same thing happened in my life when there were people who told me that he was my son and everything but in the end they discredi discredited you and considered you as an enemy. I felt mad in America because of what did to Emilio Aguinaldo not only to him but also the people of the Philippines. After the U.S. declared war in Spain, Aguinaldo saw a possibility that the Philippines might achieve independence. The U.S. hope instead of the Aguinaldo would lend his troops to its effort against in Spain. He returned to Manila on May 19, 1898 and declared Philippine independence on July. John Chilwin became, became clear that the United States had no interest in the liberation of islands. Aguinaldo forces remained apart from U.S. troops on January 1, 1899 following the meeting of a constitutional convention. Aguinaldo was proclaimed President of the Philippine Republic. Not subsequently, the United States refused to recognize Aguinaldo authority and on February 4, 1899, he declared war on the U.S. forces in the islands. After his capture on March 23, 1901, Aguinaldo agreed to swear alliance to the United States and the left public life. His dream of Philippine independence came true on July 24, 1946. Next is Benevolent Assimilation Policy Declaration. And the mode of reflection I use is mirroring. In topic of America period and document that I read is Benevolent Assimilation Policy Declaration or Benevolent Assimilation Proclamation talk about the title of which derived the President William McKinley Proclamation on December 21, 1898, in which the President promised the Filipino that the United States would substitute the mills way of justice and right for arbitrary rule. After reading the article, there are something that I saw myself in this article that William McKinley said they will come, come to the Philippines not as invaders or conquerors, but as a friends to protect natives in their homes, in their employments, and in their personal and religious rights. And I felt confused if what William McKinley said is really true just a lie because on December 21, 1898, President McKinley issued the Benevolent Assimilation Proclamation and he emphasized that U.S. have come not as invaders or conquerors, but as a friends or protect the natives in their homes, in their employment, and their personal and religious rights. But in February 1899, there was Philippine-American wars. I was confused. A benevolent assimilation proclamation is a primary account that highlights the promises and future plans of the United States and how they will take control over the Philippines after the American forces defeat the Spaniards in their colonization. 
in the land of the Philippines in the beginning of the said document that contain controversies of how the American managed to overthrow the Span Spanish regime in the Philippines and eventually proceeded to state the process of maintaining the relationship with the Filipinos during their rule. The Americans are not here to invade nor initiate a war from the Filipinos but rather give them support and protection as token of friendship. They intend to protect the natives with their rights, give them benefits and specifically respect. It was discussed in the, in the text in order to establish a new political power. The authority and supremacy will be granted to the United States in order to create a rebuilt cooperation of both of the countries. Next is Commonwealth of the Philippines 1935 or 1986. And the mode of reflection I use is telescoping. People need government same with the society to have prosperity of life. The Commonwealth of the Philippines is the best remedy to have civilized society and way of living. Established through the Tiding McDuffie Law, the Commonwealth government from 1935-1946 was designed as a traditional, traditional administration in preparation for the country complete independence. During this period, the Filipinos were given the power and responsibility to manage their domestic affairs and under the American supervision. Led by, led by Manuel Quezon as the first president, the Commonwealth tackled the economic and social problem that visited the country during the seed period. This part of the compilation included the 1935 constitution which led, led out of the legal foundation and basic principle of government, set of articles that will pro prosper the life of people in the government, and the most important law of all is the bills of rights for all citizens. Order and peace, what we aim to live, and the Commonwealth or govern, government will make it happen. It's, it is for us to follow, for it is the strength of the government that they are supposed to buy people. Next is World War II, and the mode of reflection I use is telescoping. As we live in a conflict society, battles are emerging, we cannot control our fate to encounter problems leading to fight or war before the World War II. Life, in it, life is in AC because blood and death were being caused by it. In 1941, the co Commonwealth government was interrupted with Japan bombing of the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii that started the Second War, World War. Following the attack of Pearl Harbor, the Japanese bombed Manila and the sub sub in order to save Manila from destruction. General Douglas MacArthur declared it an open city. However, the bombing continued, resulting in the destruction of Manila. Shortly after the occupation of Manila, the Japanese forces established their government in the country that lasted until 1945. At the outset of the occupation, new constitution were being formed, which is the 1943 constitution. The Japanese government formed the Philippine Executive Commission, which, which was composed mainly of political leaders of the Commonwealth government. On June 16, 1943, Japanese Prime Minister Hideki Tojo promised to grant Philippines its independence. I believe that the life of Filipino in the hand of Japanese regime was not easy. After some time, we are freed from their hands, those we adopt their culture. 